They knew before, but they know now. I'm still moving the same way. So I throw these Jews out there, you do what you do, brothers. So these five things that I like to talk to brothers about, the first thing, obviously, is self-explanatory. It's knowledge. It's what you know. Now, when, I, when I'm speaking to you about knowledge, let me be clear. I'm talking to you about effective information. I'm not talking to you about down and goings. I'm not talking to you about iceberg slim. I'm definitely not talking to you about Fifty Shades of Grey. Because, because the only thing I'm going to get after reading Fifty Shades of Grey is feeling a little freaky, and then I'm in the shower doing freaky stuff. So I'm not going to get nothing out of it. Well, let's not say nothing, but nothing I can build something from. Okay? So I'm actually talk to you about getting effective knowledge, knowledge that you can use, effective information that you can use to produce something, to help you enhance yourself. The second thing is skills. Now, every institution offers a vocational stuff, and even if some institutions might not have as many, because I know this one here had more than what it has now when I first got here. They had the carpentry, they had the other stuff. Now they only really got like the culinary yards and small engines and stuff like that. Right? But even if you're not interested in that, and no one is telling you, yo, go take culinary yards so you can go home and become a chef. No one is telling you that. But instead of you being in the block, BSing about your past or mad because the counselor didn't want to give you a, a print out and just, just straight wasting your money, you could be putting your money in that. And that's another tool that you're adding to your bag of tools so that when you do get out and that dude says to you, what can you do? You say, well, I know how to do this, this, and this, this. Oh, by the way, yeah, I'm also, you know, I'm also nice with the culinary, so in case you need me to chef you sign up, you, know, you don't got to go to lunch, I got you. You see what I'm saying? Or if they say, you know, listen, man, you know, today we're not using no, uh, we ain't using no hammers. But all you got is a hammer. And he says, today we're using saws and drills. You got that? You got that. I got you, baby. Right here. Come on. Let's go to work. Because you're enhancing your skills. You're adding on. The third thing is network. I gotta build on this one for a second, because a lot of people actually think they have a network right now, because they, they may have popped from down the corner as part of their network. Look at the word. The word is net and work. So you're talking about uh, a group of people that are actually employed, people that are actually bettering themselves in society, because obviously that's what we all want to go back to and be, right? A productive member of society? Because you can either be that, or you can be this. There's no in the middle. He's either you're going to be a productive member of society, or you're going to be this. Now, I don't want this. Who wants this? So then that means we're trying to get there, right? So a network is people that are actually employed, people that are actually moving forward. That's what you want as your circle. Today, Ms. Milliken. Ms. Career, Ms. Figueroa, Ms. Sharp, they will be part of my network today. All right? Now, I can come to them and be like, oh, listen, I'm, you know, I'm looking for work. They might not know nothing right now. But who knows what happens a week or two, a month from now, they're speaking to a coworker, a neighbor, a cousin, whatever, and they tell them, oh, you know, they're hiring over here by the Lego spot, or they're hiring over, what it is, let me call it just. And then they call me, up, oh, I'm there. And now I'm there in my network, work for me. You see how that worked out? Now listen, we're men, and I understand the whole machismo thing there. And listen, we don't need nobody. I understand that. But that right there is an illusion. Get rid of that way of thinking. Because there's no man that's an iron on to his own. No one makes it by himself. I told you I come from New York, but there's some of the biggest buildings out there. Beautiful to look at. And you know they got to withstand crazy weather. Winter, snow, all types of you know, whether being thrown at it. The only way they can do that is by having a strong structure and a strong foundation. We also need that. Find somebody in your life that you know is doing right for themselves or they can help you out, put them a part of your network because you're going to need one. All right? No one makes
mix it alone. The third one, the fourth one, is the area. Consider the area that you're going back to. Right? Most brothers are quick to say, well, you know, I've been approved by Miss Figueroa for a halfway house package, so I'm going to go over and just tell her to hurry up and throw me in Waterbury or Hartford because they have the most, the most halfway houses, which will improve my chances of getting accepted. Because again, I'm in a hurry to get out. <laughs> right? I'm in a hurry to get out. Right? Now, we all know we're convicted felons. And when we step out, we're going to be ex-convicted felons. And that's always going to be on our history. Anyone today can easily check that out. So we're going to go back into society vibing for jobs against people that don't have that ex like us. So we better be bringing something to that table that'll make that dude say, you know what, you got the job. Instead of this dude who's never been to prison. I'm giving you the job. You better be bringing something to that table. So now again, when I consider the area, why would I, just because I'm approved for a house, put myself in a predicament where today, in today's economy, 7.8% in the United States are unemployed. Why would I put myself in Waterbury and in Hartford when they both have double digits unemployment rates? That's like me throwing myself into the fire. It's less opportunities there for me. I already have an ex against me, and I'm going to put myself in a spot where the likelihood of me getting a job is even slimmer because I'm in a rush to get out. I'm going to get out regardless. I don't have life. And I got 36 years. I can go lay in my bunk and not do nothing. And the day will come. Well, they will send a CEO and tell me, yo, let's go. You got to go. Your time's up. And even if I try to play fly, I'll be like, I ain't going to know it. Really? They will pick me up, take me to the gate, and throw my ass out. Because I cannot stay once my time is up. So that day is coming for me. Regardless of what I do, it's coming. I want to make sure that when I get out, I don't come back. The reason I say that is because the number one offense is what, Brian? Coming back to jail, violation. The number one offense in Connecticut is violation. It's not this dude that killed that dude, or this dude who sold drugs over here, or this dude who did the stickers. It's a person coming back to jail. Think about that. Because that only means that a brother had to be here first, get out, and then came back at a faster rate than it is someone committing a new crime. That's the second thing I showed you today. That something is wrong with our way of thinking. We're so in a hurry to get back there, but we're not going there prepared. We're prepared for the weight room, though. We know what we're going to do when we get there. But how many are preparing for what we need to do out there? for what we need to have out there to keep us out there. Because as Ty stated, if he had a job, he wouldn't have been walking that wreck y'all with me. The fifth thing is your rep. Now that has three aspects to it. The first one is your criminal history. Listen, mine is what it is, but I got the scarlet letter of the land. I killed somebody. I can't change that. I can't do no hocus pocus and my man gonna jump up out this grave like he's Lazarus. I don't have that ability. So it is what it is. I can't change it. I could become the Pope from here on out and the world will still remind me that 22 years ago I murdered somebody. I can't change it. What I can do is not add to it. That's what I could do. I don't have to catch more cases and make it worse. I can do that. The second thing is your credit history. Now someone might ask me, why are we talking about credit? We're in prison. It's not like we're going to the mall and we're shopping. Nobody pointing out no black cars. But in today's economy, an employee wants to know your credit history. And the reason he wants to know your credit history is because he wants to know how you manage your stuff. You like that? I know, I know she appreciates that. That's an inside joke. Alright? 
stuff. See, they want to know how you manage your stuff because if you can't manage your stuff, why is it I trust you to manage my stuff? That just doesn't even make no sense. You tell me you're going to take care of my stuff better than you take care of your own stuff? That's crazy talk. So that's why I want to know that. The third one is your social history. Your social history is how would someone just think about this today too? When y'all go back to the block, think about this. If I had to ask somebody about you, and somebody, you know, obviously unbiased, not someone who's your boy or, or your cousin, I'm not gonna ask them. Of course they're gonna give you, you know, uh, or speak about you in a good light. If I had to ask a straight, if I had to ask the seal in your block about you, if I had to ask the counselor in your block about you, how would they describe me? Would they say, oh, you know, he's a drop of leg, or he's, a, he's an a-hole. Would they describe him like that? Or would they say, no, he's brother's respectful, he's quiet, I've never seen him in no, he's, he's in his bunk, you know, reading, or would they describe you like that? See, if I had to ask somebody to describe me today, and I say today because this is 22 years, I came in 21, as you already know, I came in at 21 with almost 40 years, you already know I wasn't coming in with, with wings on my back. I wasn't no angel. No, do I ever plan to have wings on? So obviously there was a time when I was on some BS. He'll talk about that a little more, about our old past gang days and all that. Huh? But if I had to ask somebody today to describe me, if I had to ask Miss Figueroa to describe me, and again, I don't want to put words in her mouth, I would like her to feel freely to say how she see me, but I would hope that she would use adjectives such as, well, just as knowledgeable, he's reliable, he's dependable, because see, when I hear that, it makes me feel good. Huh? Imagine someone saying, oh, just, he ain't no good, he'll stab you in the back, he doesn't keep his word, he's feisty. How you think that's going to make me feel? You think I'm going to be like, oh, thank you. I ain't going to be like that. But the good thing is that I can actually use how she would describe me to describe myself when I'm at that interview. And the brother tells me, well, tell me a little about yourself. What I'm going to say? Well, tell me, well, yo, I ain't no good. I'll stab you in the back. But I'm real nice when it's paid. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, I'll check you real quick. You see? That's not going to work for me. So your social history is very important because it has a correlation. How people describe you, it has a connection with your present behavior. So when a person describes you, always remember that they're describing what you're showing them. Right? You can change that. You have control over those things. Today, employers actually want to know your Facebook account as well. Your Facebook account, they want to know that. The reason they want to know that is because they know that when you come to get that interview, you're putting your best foot forward, brother. They know that. They know they're not looking at the real you yet. They know the real you will manifest itself in time. They know that. But see, they got to make a decision today on whether they're going to hire you, on whether you're worth this, minimally, at least. They need to make that decision today. I can't wait for this brother to show me who he really is. I need to know today. And I know he's putting his best foot forward when he came in front of me. So guess what? Let me see your Facebook account. Let me check your joint. And then I go on and I check your joint. And they see, they see this brother right there at the table. He got the gun like this, he got the stacks of money, the drugs, shorties with the thong on, and he like, ah! But he's telling me he's the right dude for the job. Who am I going to believe? The picture? Or the dude that's in front of me for the past 10 minutes, using big words and he's all upright and who am I going to believe? So be careful how you use them social medias when you get out there. Because what you post about you, could and will be used against you guys. This article right here is from the Wall Street Journal. This brother will speak a little bit about uh, Starbucks and the uh, amount of jobs they posted for 
openings and how many people actually apply for it. Everyone is well aware the state of our economy. Yes, it's improving. You know, at a little slow pace, but it's improving. All right? Give credit to that man at the house. Man. He's doing what he can. Yeah? So what businesses have done, because they've been bombarded with so many applications, because now, you know, remember how we used to back in the days you was able to walk in and get the one-on-one -on -one interview just right there, right off the bridge. You're like, yo, I'm looking for a job. You get the application, you sign it, you wait a couple of minutes, you see somebody, you get an interview, you throw the silver time, and boom, you got the job. Remember how they used to work like that? Yeah, that's going past it. That's going out there. That's dinosaur right now. Now what they want you to do is they want you to go online and fill an application out online to get a job. How many people been out there? So how many people can verify it? Right? That's how they're doing it now, right? So that means they're not even going to see you. They're not going to know how big Fry is. They're not going to know how, they're definitely not going to know how crazy Perry looks. <laughs> they're going to just judge you by your credentials, by how you look on paper. Right? Now, this software, what it has done, because again, businesses are in business for profit. They can't have the human uh, resource department just looking at applications all day. That's time consuming. They're losing money. So now they come up with a software that automatically, when you submit that application online, this software automatically screens your joint for specific words. If your application doesn't have what this software is looking for, guess where your application is going? Now we understand why Ty said, yo, I did like two or three hundred applications now, but they never called me. Now we know. We know why. The two main things that this software is looking for is right here. It's what you know and what can you do. That's what it's looking for. We know why Ty didn't get a job, right? He only knew this much. He could only do this much. He was nice at space, though. And he can tell you everything that Sonny Corrento's did in every episode of General Hospital. He was nice at that. I spoke to a brother who's been down a long time. He knows what his work too. A brother named Vin, he works with us in the, in the kitchen. He got about 20 joints in. And, and this goes to show you that I want you to think that just because a brother been down a long time, that he, he's better off or he, he has improved himself. But listen, this brother's been down 20 years. And I asked him, I said, Vin, if they open that gate for you right now, right now, they just said, yo, come on, they just don't work, let's go, you're leaving. Right now. I said, how would you go about looking for work? You got a car? He said, yeah, I had a car when I was out there. I said, you know, still running or was that Fred Flintstone car now? You know, you got to pick it up with this. Because you've been locked for 20 years, but I know that car ain't running no more. <laughs> so obviously he said, I just feel like I have to use the bus. I said, okay. I said, so we, we look for somebody, because I know he don't know, he's been locked up 20 years. So we look for somebody who just came in, but we have four, four months in prison now. Asked him, yo, what's the bus fare now out there? He said, $2. He said, $2. I said, well, okay, how, 